I'm not gonna lie, this doesn't even feel different. The difference is undetectable. Hi, kids! Victorious puppies! Huh? This team is ruining my life! Why do I watch hockey? Stress relief! Okay. We can and we will! Victory puppies, Iggy! It's it's gonna be a little different, but then again, what is it? And this one is for Charlie, the victory puppy. I know that you would, you're would. you supposed to take the treat, Iggy. I haven't, uh, there was supposed to be a heartwarming thing where you take the treat, and I'm like, Iggy, you weren't supposed to take the treat, but you're such an obedient boy, you didn't even take the treat. Iggy, Charlie told you to have the treat. It's, I, I'm not. Good boy, Iggy. Now go see who poops first, you or Leo. All right! Before I do the thing, and I'm going to do the thing, let's get one thing squared away right away. This is weird, this is abnormal, this is bizarre. This is the strangest moment of any of our lives. This moment in particular, Steve, the last five or six months, whatever it is, guys. But this is a unique opportunity. Remember we yelled and screamed, and if it's not an 82 game season, well, it's not going to be an 82 game season, is it? We have this in front of us now. And until I saw Jake Musson nearly kill a man during this game, I didn't think it was real, but this is very real. These are real hockey games. This is a real Stanley Cup playoffs. And at the end of it is a real Stanley Cup. Do you want it or not? Hockey is back. And with that, Leafs win! 4-2 to two over the Montreal Canadiens that I pulled something for sure! And usually you're being a cocky jerk if you say something like this, but that was just a warm-up. And right away it was weird. Pumping in crowd noise. They're, they're, they covered all of the seats at Scotiabank Arena. I've been in that building I don't even know how many times. I used to work in that building for Leafs TV and I didn't recognize it. The Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens standing interlocked looking at each other like you're not Ron. Max Domi standing there getting to live his childhood dream of playing a home game in Toronto. And by the way there is a reason that the Leafs and Montreal Canadiens were standing interlocked like that. To steal the words of the Boston Bruins, as a team we have decided to lock arms during the playing of the United States and Canadian anthems as a sign of solidarity with the black community. I think what they meant to say is black lives matter. And right away you can tell this wasn't just a warm up for the players because during a tribute to Eddie Shack, they had a moment of silence that had crowd noise in it despite the fact that they were in an empty building. And everyone who was getting on everyone on their phone during this game, leave them alone! This game was played on July 28th. The last time the Leafs play there was March 10th. They're trying their best. Yeah, man, I don't like it. It's weird. It is literally the law to wear a mask in the bank. We're well past weird. But once the song was sung, the Toronto Maple Leafs and Montreal Canadiens played a hockey game. I'm not gonna lie, I was having an out-of-body experience. They, they were doing the pre-game, and I'm like, this, this is a little strange, but it's a montage. I've seen montages before. Then Ron McLean came on, and it was very the present, and I'm like, what's he doing there, even though I, I worked there? Speaking of which, I haven't been to that studio for five months, but if someone touched my Cujo mask, there's gonna be heck to pay. But as the montage goes, they show Ron McLean, they show the anthem, they start skating around. They're lining up for the face-off and I started to realize this might be real. And what made it real, strangely, was the graphic saying Stanley Cup playoffs. Because that's what these are, by the way. This was a warm-up game to prepare teams for what's next. Well, what's next is a best of five series, eight of them actually, for a chance to get into what's next. Well, what's next? The Stanley Cup playoffs where there will be rounds one, two, three, and four. And at the end of it, if you win the fourth one, you get the cup. And it started to be real and I started to ask all kinds of questions. If you win the Stanley Cup, you probably aren't allowed to drink out of it, are you? Can you kiss it? Can you look at it? And from how far away? So much uncertainty. But one thing was certain, if you win the Stanley Cup this year, you're a Stanley Cup champion. And all in one moment, like a bolt of lightning to the top of my head, I realized I wasn't just watching a hockey game, I was watching the Toronto Maple Leafs. Holy, oh my goodness, prepare for the Stanley Cup playoffs. Oh my goodness, Look, listen to me, listen to me. I'm already asking questions about the Stanley Cup. Don't get my hopes up, don't get my, don't, Morgan, don't give it to John. John, I know it's a two one, don't give it. Soup actually did it! And it had to be Soup! It couldn't have been anybody else! Nick Robertson would have been good too. It was Soup! Morgan Riley with a nifty little play to John Tavares. He's streaking down and he's got Ilya Mikheyev with him, streaking even faster because, oh my goodness, Soup is hot! Bangs it in! 33 seconds in. It's real. It's very real. Because Leafs fans know, but for non-Leaf fans watching, first of all, hi, what are you, lost? Ilya Mikheyev was the Leafs' MVP of their scrimmages in preparation for 
this very game. And people said, wow. And yeah, I mean, I guess your reaction depended on what your eyes saw. Did they see the text that said Ilya Mikheyev was voted the MVP of the scrimmages? Well, yeah, I could see how you would think it was silly. But did they see the visuals of why he was the MVP of the scrimmages? Ilya Mikheyev, such an integral part of the Leafs lineup, and I'm serious, he was an important Jenga piece this season. Losing Morgan Riley sucked. They lost Marner for a bit, Tavares for a bit, Janssen for basically the whole season. It was a nightmare in terms of staying healthy. But under Sheldon Keefe, the marriage of Sheldon Keefe and Ilya Mikheyev, when both those guys were on the Leafs bench during a game, they were nearly impossible to beat. And I'm not saying that lightly, look at their record. I think there might have been a stretch where they were like 10-1-1. One, one. But he goes down to an injury, gets his wrist slashed by a skate in a game against New Jersey in December. And this speedy, this lanky, this defensively responsible, this helpful, this smart hockey player was taken out of their lineup, sort of middle six guy, but they never really found a replacement. And they took Kerfoot off his line and they're like, you play wing now, and it was a great line. What about the line that he left behind? And it just felt like with Mikheyev out of the lineup, the Leafs were constantly playing whack-a-mole and never got it back. And you say, that's ridiculous that Ilya Mikheyev is the straw that stirs the drink. What about the big four? What about Nylander, Matthews, Marner, and Tavares? Go look at their numbers. They held up their end of the bargain. The depth definitely took a hit when Mikheyev went down. But since then, Mikheyev, even through all of this, has been in Toronto in the lab. You know what this reminds me of? Remember the 2013 lockout? It's January, and the Leafs, first game of the season, top defensive pair, with Dion Phaneuf, they put Mike Koska. And a lot of us said, hey, that's pretty dumb. But it actually wasn't. This guy's actually been playing games. A lot of the players coming back hadn't, at least for a while. Maybe they were playing in Europe, but then they had to come back for the lockout. He was in the minors. Now, we all know NHL players have been on the ice for at least a few weeks now, most of them. Some of them for about a month that we've seen in like Edmonton and Toronto. But for a lot of players, it was literally illegal to go out and skate. He's not sitting in a bowl on the kitchen table getting cold. He's not even just simmering on the stove. He's adding ingredients. This guy is amazing. If you've been watching, you know, and if you haven't been, you're about to find out. Apart from Ilya Mikheyev's goal, a lot of people were zeroing in on Nick Robertson's first period. Admittedly shaky. I didn't think it was very good, but I liked the way he was battling. There definitely seemed to be some nerves there. A bit of a weird shot that he took on the power play, but I like that he just got it out of the way. I'm going to shoot on Carey Price. This kid, and this teenager was just like, I'm going to shoot. I might beat Carey Price one-on-one -on -one right here. Now, he needs to calm down a little bit. He did take a penalty and the Leafs got into a little penalty trouble. And then something wonderful happened. On the penalty kill, the Habs had a defender, a defender, and a puck in between the two of them. To which Kasperi Kapanen responded, I love this song! Flies down the middle for a partial breakaway on Carey Price. Stop! Kerfoot roofs it! No, stop playing! Yes, he did. Yes, he... Don't you dare review it! It's a warm-up game! Alexander Kerfoot roofs the rebound. Leafs have a 2-0 lead and their first T-pain of the season. Shouty! Multi-goal lead for the Leafs! This is gonna go great! And by that, I mean they had a goal scored by... Where's the guy? Just bring Thomas. him the... Yep. Yep. Ta -ta. That's him. That's his name. Well, okay, the Leafs still look pretty good and they're about to head to the second intermission with a... Wait a minute! Final 30 seconds of the second period. Nick Robertson, who is a Leaf, by the way, pause to giggle, passes the puck to Morgan Riley. Morgan Riley puts it on Alexander Kerfoot, you gosh darn handsome gentleman! Scores his second of the game, makes it 3-1 Leafs, heading into the third. And Nick Robertson, first career NHL point, grabbed that puck! Nope, because if the record book asks, this game never happened. I know it's just a secondary assist for Robertson on this one, but I gotta give him kudos. He's at the left point, gets the pass, and doesn't really have a lot of time. He's got Brendan Gallagher bearing down on him. Yeah, it's his first game in months too, but the games he was playing were against teenagers. This is Brendan Gallagher. But he rips a wicked pass over to Riley, and Riley's got all the time in the world. Meaning he could do whatever he wants with the puck, and he did, and it led to a goal. He deserved that assist. Now again, oh, oh, the Habs make it 3-2 in the third. I will not get mad about warm-up scores, is what I told myself, but oh, I was prepared to. Have you seen my 70 and 7 video series? I hope you have. It was a lot of work. I went through all 70 of the Leafs games this season, broke them into 10 game segments, and uploaded 7 videos. Do you know how many blown leads the Leafs had? I want to say they blew more multi-goal leads than one-goal leads. I'm dead serious. It's not a joke. So when I saw they had a 3-1 lead, I was happy 
and then immediately went into breathing exercises because that's what it's like to be a Leafs fan. When is the Calm app gonna sponsor this channel? I need someone, I need, I need, I need a little bit of help. Can somebody help me? No, don't take a penalty. That's not how you help. Oh, but here's how you do it. On the penalty kill, Zach Hyman with the puck rushing down the left wing, and this was actually hilarious to watch all night. And Montreal Canadiens fans, if you're watching, this is, I think, a pretty legit criticism. You could tell this wasn't a hockey game that counted, and, you know, that was true for some of the Leafs, too, and I wouldn't say they were going full-blown 100%, but it was extra true for the Habs. A lot of them didn't look like they even wanted to be there. I, I was texting with producer Drew during the game, and I earnestly was like, Jonathan Drouin's in this game? I didn't know that. And if you're not trying 100%, and Zach Hyman is barreling down on you, you're about to have an awful time. An awful time. There's a shot, Riley gets a rebound, bangs it in, and if he didn't bang it in, you could have passed. Marner had a tap in. It was beautiful, and the Leafs' power play should really take some notes from the penalty kill. Hmm, I like that part where they did stuff. And with that, <laughs> Leafs win the game. Frederick Anderson looked pretty solid. He had to come up big a couple times. Jake Muzzin uh, uh, really nearly killed a guy and then blocked a shot. Jake, warm up. Like, dude, tell him to, someone get him a dictionary. But I think in that, you saw some encouraging things with the Leafs, and I'll tell you why. Everyone's been talking about the fact that the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Columbus Blue Jackets, swept the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, and then what happened? They lost to the, yeah, us too. The Toronto Maple Leafs are taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets, and it's not the greatest matchup for them, I'm not gonna lie. The Blue Jackets always play the Leafs a certain way, but the weird, the unbelievable circumstances surrounding this play in, for the playoffs, it's in the Leafs' favor. It has to be. It's in their building. No one's played, and it's going to be about skill. It's going to be like the beginning of the season. Columbus, as the season goes on, they become more of a grinding team. Their structure gets a little bit better. They get Vesna goaltending from three guys. But this is to the Leafs' advantage. But the fact that the Leafs so clearly Want this. Zach Hyman, as always. Ilya Mikheyev, in the lab since Christmas. Nick Robertson, just a rabid dog out there trying to make the lineup. And even if he doesn't make the game one lineup, the Leafs needed him there as the pace car. You must be at least this tenacious to ride the Stanley Cup playoffs. And do I think it's the wisest decision to lay out your opponent and block Shea Weber's slap shots in a warm-up game? No! But Jake Muzzin is just setting the tone. And if this is the tone, the Leafs might make some noise. Now, we'll put a little bit of a bow on it. We'll save the question segment for when the play-in games start. But I hope I answered some questions just by making this video. And probably the number one question I've been getting for over a month now is, can you make videos as loud as you used to now that you're a dad? By the way, I'm a dad. There's an actual son of mine upstairs. And not once did I get an angry text from my wife. So, uh, yeah, I think we're good. The goal for the play-ins and playoffs is going to be to make videos the night of. It's not. It's just not always going to work. I almost didn't do it tonight uh, because I have a five-week-old human being who screams at... Uh, he doesn't know the difference between day and night. It's true. I've been reading all kinds of books. He doesn't know his hands belong to him. I, it, it, what do you, what do you, how do you reason with that? I'm sleepy, I think is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to try to do night of videos, but I can't promise them. On the Sportsnet channel, Hat Picks and Dang It's are back. I believe we have a brand new Panago Pizza Steve Dangle podcast coming tomorrow. Oh, and uh, Victory Baby? No. Dogs like when you get excited and throw food at their face. Babies? No. Once you can get them to sleep, if you can even pull that off, you gotta walk around the room like the lights are turned off and the floor is covered in mouse traps. But I love him, he's so cute, oh my god. And listen, thank you very much uh, if you're watching for the first time, and thank you very much if you're coming back. I'm glad you're still here. I'm wearing shorts. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends to give their victory puppy some extra treats. Oh, and uh, the next game counts. Hockey's back.